Knowing how to manage stress is important for a healthy lifestyle. It makes sense, right? Stress doesn't just affect your mood. It can also have long-term health impacts if you don't take steps to manage it. <laughs> stress that's not dealt with can lead to high blood pressure, heart disease, stroke, obesity, as well as diabetes. So how can you better manage your stress, right? And, and recognize the signs. It might be some time to do something about it or talk to someone. Psychologist and Professor Dr. Uh, Tracy Pacquiam Alloway is joining us via Zoom this morning. Good morning. Thanks for being with us. Good morning. Thanks so much for having me. Of course. So we're, we'll talk about managing stress in just a second. First, you know, we're all busy. Stress, I, I just feel like, is part of life, right? So are there some signs that stress has reached a point in our lives, though, where it needs to be better managed? Such a great question, and I think it's always important to recognize that stress in and of itself is not a negative thing. It can have very beneficial or helpful effects. We know from research that acute or small levels of stress can actually motivate us to achieve our goals, to push ourselves a little farther, but it's harmful when it becomes debilitating. When you find yourself paralyzed, when you find that it's hard to get out of bed in the morning, when you find you don't want to do the activities you usually enjoy doing, so having that moment of self-reflection and insight to know, is this stress helping me, pushing me towards my goals, or is it actually harming or debilitating me? Yeah, very good point. So uh, what are some of the most common stressors that, that, that you see, uh, you know, among, you know, patients that you talk to? Yep, so we do know there's a, a top list as these things go. Moving uh, a home, selling or buying a home, moving is a big life stressor. Changing jobs is another life stressor. Any change in a family circumstance, so a child graduating or change in your relationship, those are also big stresses. So any major shift from your normal routine typically is what researchers have identified as an objective life stressor. Yeah, and it's interesting too, because while those things kind of come and go, the reality is, is that sometimes it can just feel like a domino effect because, you know, everything seems to be more expensive right now. People get, you know, stressed financially, and then you add on all the other things. You could see why people just reach a point where, what do I do? Yes, and so I have three tips to help the all of us this morning. The first is it's actually your mindset matters. And what I mean by this, it's based on research to show that your perception of stress makes a big difference. So while the life stressor can be very overwhelming, like we've talked about, whether it's moving jobs or homes or a change in your, your personal life, your perception of that stress can actually act as a buffer protecting you. And researchers followed people over a year, and they found that when people would approach a life stressor as feeling like, you know what, I, I can manage this. I'm changing jobs, but this is exciting. It's good for my professional development, or I have a shift in my relationship uh, uh, status. It's, it's a new opportunity here. So that mindset actually acted as a buffer, preserving not just their mental health, but their physical health. The researchers found that people who had that positive mindset shift were less likely to experience health and heart problems. Yeah, it's interesting because that's that's the theory of glass is half full, not half empty a little bit. All right. So the second is also this. This is so simple. I actually have one person in the newsroom. I'm going to do this to actually uh, coming up in just a few minutes who's having a particularly stressful morning. A hug. Just give someone yeah. a hug. Yes, and research shows that a 20-second hug actually decreases our cortisol, that's our stress hormone, and increases our oxytocin. That's our bonding hormone. It's sometimes known as the love hormone. So that 20-second hug can help really de-escalate that level of stress. And uh, so just make sure the person you're giving a hug to is, is appreciative of the hug, that we're not just <laughs> hugging strangers. But we do know that research this is a real quick way to decrease those stress levels. <laughs> Don't hug a stranger, right? Okay, and what about this? Chill? Yes, this is from my own research, and I found that when we're feeling stressed, we tend to default to an emotional decision. So when we're overwhelmed, we, we feel like, you know what, I just, I'm going to do something, and it can be impulsive, it can be emotional, and it may not be the decision that you would have made in a non-stressed situation. So a way to de-escalate or decrease that level of stress is to put your hand in a bucket of ice for one minute. And the reason that is effective is because that's, that ice overloads your emotional brain, your amygdala. And so your emotional brain is busy dealing with that that actual physical stressor of the ice, and it frees up your prefrontal cortex, that rational brain, to take a step back, evaluate the situation, and come up with a more objective decision. I love it. Great suggestions this morning that we certainly need on a Friday. Dr. Tracy Pacquiam-Alloway joining us this morning. Thanks for your time. Thank you.